Hello everyone, this is Russia Alright, and here's what's been in the Russian news last week. Remember brother Timofey? On July the 31st, brother Tim was in a terrible accident. His borrowed BMW sports car got wrecked as he lost control of it in downtown Moscow and hit two cars. The eyewitnesses said brother was driving under influence because he clearly couldn't stand straight and smelled heavily of alcohol. The story resonated on the web and maybe that's why last week Timofey had to face court. Now, in a normal Western country like Germany or the United States, he would go to jail and get his license revoked for life. In the Eastern world, on the other hand, things would fly under the radar and no one would even know that a higher church functionary had made a mess of such scale. But not in Russia! Timofey had to face court. Okay, but when it was time to show evidence, the court discovered that the whole police footage of the accident had disappeared. Police officials said that a computer virus destroyed the evidence. Now, what are the odds of that? In a country that gave birth to Kaspersky antivirus, a country where police computers still run on punch cards, how do you even make virus run on those computers? For an expert opinion, we turn to our computer specialist, Slava Moroz. You see, thanks to the good job of former President Medvedev, many police computers actually got upgraded. Of course, there are some that still cannot precisely detect whether a person is drunk or not. But on the other hand, some of them are so fast, they can actually see into the future. Here is an example. We are now looking at the testing footage of a top-notch event data recorder that had been recently installed on many patrol cars. The navigation is so advanced, it sees road conditions before they actually happen. For example, this device predicts the green light before it is actually on, which makes it okay for a police car to go on the red. See? Isn't it great? So, in some cases, a virus actually could attack the evidence. But I think that it is a good thing. Because if it hadn't been deleted, the court would have had to invent some other reason to let Timofey go, even if they had to revoke his license. Say, the footage would need to show Timofey, well, fighting some space goblins with a fifth of Jack Daniels in his hand as he defends our motherland. Or maybe he would be trying to stop a rigged school bus with Sandra Bullock behind the wheel. Presently, we just don't have the cinematic technology to build that kind of evidence. But we can only hope that when space goblins do attack Moscow next time, Brother Timofey will be there to defend us with a fifth of Jack. Of course, Putin was in the news, as always. This time, President Putin surprised the nation as he went up in the sky with a flock of cranes. The event called the Flight of Hope and was all over the news. Petrovich, roll the clip. This, of course, wasn't your regular fly with cranes thing. For this event, Putin became the alpha male to a flock of endangered cranes that desperately needed to learn to fly. And Putin did his part perfectly. Good job, Mr. Putin. In a wave of national awe and admiration, responses followed soon. A group of young men, for example, performed an even more daring operation that they called a flight of dreams. They decided to show the miracle of flight to three birds that could never actually fly. A turkey, a hen and a goose. See for yourselves.
Great job, guys! But, of course, as President of Russia, Putin isn't only interested in birds. His expertise in other conventional pleasures came to light in a recent interview with Russia Today TV channel. После этого они устроили э, сеанс группового секса в публичном месте. Но это, как говорится, их дело, если люди вправе заниматься всем, чем хотят, если это не нарушает закон. Но в публичном месте, мне кажется, что это э, уже следовало бы обратить на это внимание властей. Потом еще выложили в интернет. Некоторые э, любители говорят, что групповой секс лучше, чем индивидуальный, потому что здесь, так же, как в любой коллективной работе, сочкануть можно. Но повторю, это, это дело каждого конкретного человека. Of course, one cannot resist mentioning their expertise in group sex when casually discussing the Pussy Riot case. Um, happens to everyone. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Putin. In other news, a big scandal is now spinning off from a curious case of certain Gennady Gutkov, member of the State Duma, until last Friday. In December 2011, Gutkov sided with the opposition and accused the United Russia, the party of power, of ballot stuffing and falsifying results of parliamentary elections. At that time, he flew under the radar and his opposing views weren't much appreciated. In 2012, Gutkov continued his crusade against the United Russia. He had a numerous walkouts and rallies, siding with well-known opposition leaders like Alexei Navalny and Ilya Yashin. But as once stated by former Duma speaker Boris Krizlov, Parliament is no place for a political discussion. So on September the 14th, Gutkov was stripped of his deputy seat. Official grounds for revoking his mandate were that he allegedly owned a business, which is illegal for members of the State Duma. Among those who supported Gutkov's revoking of mandate on the grounds of commercial activities were Andrei Isayev, owner of IGP Group shares and following real estate items. Grigory Anikeyev, co-owner of Sewer Systems and numerous other companies with a total personal income of 2,712,131,087 rubles. And here is a short list of his assets. Yelena Nikolaeva, a businesswoman with following assets. Hmm. The list of prominent businessmen is quite long, but please, no more. And of course, the accusations weren't proven in the court of law, and the evidence against Gutkov were allegedly fake. However, Gutkov still had his mandate revoked, which brings us to tonight's sections that we like to call Come On! Come on, we're Slava Maraz! Come on, Mr. Gutkov, what did you expect? Constitutional judgment in a country where thousands of people go into the streets every two months to defend their constitutional right for public gatherings? And where do they end up? I mean, come on, you come to Duma to vote for United Russia's lobby laws. And unless you have better lobby laws, you keep quiet. I mean, come on. And Mr. Gutkov, you've even been warned. You told in an interview that United Russia offered you a warm place in some local administration that you could live happily and keep quiet. Why wouldn't you agree? The Mafia has made you an offer that you cannot refuse, I mean, come on! And siding with the opposition in the State Duma, what is that? A new hip trend? Come on, one cannot simply walk into Duma without Putin's approval. It has been said, Russian parliament is no place for political discussion. There are other countries for that. Come on, Mr. Gitkov, come on! In other news, on September the 4th, a futuristic film branded hit the screens worldwide. The film takes place in Moscow in 2017. Now, while the film looks great, here are some things that bother us. Here, take a look at the trailer. America is falling in love with the burger. Introducing the super deluxe Jumbo Juicy Burger. Two and a half pounds of sizzling pure all beef. Try the burger. You'll fall in love. What if there was a code in your mind that controlled your desires? What if it was implanted, branded there by the products that you use every day? What's wrong? 
I have tried to pretend that everything is okay, but everything is not okay. I must have been obsessed. And now it's like I've come to my senses. You're seeing creatures. No, I'm really seeing them. Someone set this whole thing up. They made me a pawn in their conspiracy. We have completed the first step. We have begun to alter consumers' minds. <laughs> this whole country is just one facade. And I never was just smiling. What are you going to do about it? To get the truth out, you have to go inside. Now, first thing, where are the commies and the bears? I mean, for years, Russia has been living off the Cold War stereotype. Now, where did all that go? Is this the end for the cheesy Russian stereotypes? Well, we certainly hope not. Secondly, why were all the signs and billboards written in perfectly correct Russian? Have you seen the way to make a proper Russia-based film? You take a random combination of Cyrillics, you print them in reverse, and then you put a red star all over it. There you have it, a proper fake Russian for the international audience. And finally, you think you can scare the Russians with this? You think you can scare this Russian woman with this? Think again! In local news, a festival of honey is now underway at Poklonne Hill in Moscow. Our own Stas Stalling is now live from the epicenter of festival. Stas? Stas? What are you doing? What do you mean for live? What festival? Irina, nothing happened here. Back to you. us for this fascinating report. Do bring me some honey, honey. And that's what's been in the news in Russia in the last couple of weeks. This is Russia, all right. Nas